Oh. Yeah. Good. Bilal, yes, welcome son. to the John Covey podcast. This is episode 46. Thank you. So, wow. f- firstly, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, good man. So, yes. tell us a little bit about yourself. So, where do you want to be- begin, John? I feel like it's a massive question yeah. for me because it's uh, connected to me. It's connected to but, you. Um, <laughs> but in terms of myself, I'm the director of Public Speaking Academy. I am a professional speaker, I'm a coach. I'm somebody who's um, a multiple business owner myself. Amazing. Um, I have a property business and I have interests in a number of different ventures and uh, Good. concepts. But my primary passion, I suppose, is helping people uh, find their voice in business. Um, and that can sometimes stretch across a range of different areas. So right from the, the highest end mm-hmm. CEOs of organizations, political players, um, sports stars, people in journalism, um, editors of some of the biggest uh, organisations, media organisations, and even some film stars. So right from that area through to everyday business people wanting to be able to share sure, their voice. Sure, So that's what I'm all about, yeah. And, and, and I hear, I don't know if it's worldwide or whether it's just the UK, but public speaking is actually the most feared thing. Is yeah. it in the world or is it just in the UK, I, I forget? I, I think, I think it's, a, it's accurate to say it is, it's across the world, it's across humanity. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not something that's, um, that's just stuck in the Western world or in the English language, it's, it's across sure. humanity. And it's, it's interesting because my, my own belief is that it's, it's probably been around since mankind's been around. Sure. So if you look at human history and you look at the way messages in religion, messages in movements and legends mm-hmm. have always been told around the campfire, around, yeah. around uh, Close the knit. spoken word yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah so the leaders have always had that skill and everyone else if we're a follower we're sat around that fire sure. we're listening we're listening yeah right? and then um, and then the more we listen the more we admire and the more we revere but within that space whilst you're admiring and revering the leader that fear starts to build right, and we right. don't necessarily take the step. So oh, yeah, fantastic. I think it's worldwide. Oh, and, and why is that then? Why do you think that the fear starts to build? I mean, what is it that gets in the way or? You know, it's, it's a good question, John, because there's, there's so many facets to that fear. And in the modern world, it's about judgment. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, centered around judgment and it's centered around self-doubt. It's centered around belief, mm-hmm. self-belief. And often in our schooling system, especially in the Western world, especially in the UK, for example, in the US, we've got a place where most of us will have had an experience where we were asked to stick our hands up. Mm -hmm. Most of us will have an experience where we were laughed at for reading the wrong sentence in the English class or Mm -hmm. pronouncing the wrong word or a play that went wrong. Uh There'll be moments sure. where we've experienced that, or even at teenage, or in university, or your first job placement, or even around social gatherings. Mm. I can pretty much guarantee most of us have had moments in our life where we just think to ourselves, you know what? Yeah. Get me away from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we anchor that emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it becomes part of our identity, doesn't it? So, so yeah, I think it's common. It's common to to, to most people. And those people who say that they've got no fear mm. are normally either lying sure. or simply not connected to their true self. Of course, of course. Um, so they're lying as well. Yeah, just, <laughs> so they're lying and lying. Yeah, it's a lie yeah. to back up a lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely, absolutely. And, I, and I, th- I think, you know, you and I were talking about um, this stuff earlier on a couple of, couple of minutes ago before this podcast. And the, the power of self-doubt, mm. i.e. if you failed... And if you've had moments where you've gone back in your mind and you're saying to yourself, am I enough? Am I good yeah, enough? Yeah. Am I going to get the result? And when you're asking those questions, it shows humility. It's sure. not something to shy away from. Mm. Um, and in fact, I tend to, tend to talk to my students and my delegates and my coaches and clients and say, never, never hide away from self-doubt. Yeah. Embrace, embrace it, it yeah. and use it as a quality control, use it as a way to be vulnerable, to connect inwards 
but also as a way to trampoline from. If it's that tension, you've got to go sure. down to, to come, come up. back up again. Yeah. Yeah. So, so don't be afraid of that. Good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's incredible advice for people because that's the thing that they, I, I see quite mm. often. I imagine you see mm. it a lot more than I do, but it's the, it's the fear of being exposed of, you know, looking foolish, looking silly, mm. failing, all these things mm -hmm. like that. So they're not prepared to take that step to bounce. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly it, John. So, so people, people will not do things to stretch themselves if they fear failure. Yeah. So do you think, do you think, Bilal, that it's the fear that worries them more than, what am I trying to say? Do you, do you think that it's the fear that mm -hmm. stops people from doing it? Or is it the, the fear of looking foolish? It's a good, it's a good question, and I think it's applicable to, to all areas of life, not just public speaking or not even just business. Um, I think, I think people tend to, sometimes operate from our survival brain, our mm. reptilian brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if you think about the way, human beings have been built and experienced life, if something's red hot and you touch it. Mm. You need to learn the lesson not to touch it not again. Not to touch it again, yeah. <laughs> okay, because it's just a survival mechanism. And, and most of us will allow that control to take over in irrational areas mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So if it's in an area of, for example, growing your business or, or, or getting healthy or developing that relationship or connecting with that person, reaching out, thinking bigger, sure. we'll use that reptilian survival brain, that anchor, if mm -hmm. you like, and we won't take that risk will stay in the status quo, we'll stay in the comfort zone. Sure. Um, most of us will do that. And we won't surround ourselves, John, with people who can inspire, mm. people who can dare to challenge you sure. and say, you know what, I can see a little bit more in you and maybe you should try this or yeah. go and do it. Definitely. And, and, and those that's those so elements, it, those that? elements are everything. Yeah, the, the the proximity of people that you're with is. Yeah. is uh, who was it? Who said it? Now was it Jim Rowan or someone like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. You, you are the the, your net worth is uh, the average of the people that you. Spend I think I think it was yeah. five people or something yeah. that Jim Jim Rowan I, I, refers to. I mean, to. like for you in your business, then certainly with um, with PSA, mm -hmm. like how important has getting in the right circles been to your business and the growth that it's seen? So from a from a business perspective. Um, again, we, we, we referenced some of this in the conversation, but we've got a diverse portfolio. So we, we will deal with the great, the good, the bad, the <laughs> ugly, right at the top <laughs> end. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's been always, always challenging and interesting. And then we've always wanted to serve those who need mm -hmm. this and some of the small businesses, the entrepreneurs, and that's a very important part of our business model because I believe and this is where I work from a heart-centered place in that I believe everyone has a right to have a voice mm. it doesn't matter where they've come from doesn't sure. matter what their background doesn't matter what their mission is they have the right to have their voice heard and that's yeah. been a driving force for me always Brilliant. constantly doesn't matter what class of background how many times they failed it's not about the same status quo keeping everyone the same sure it's about being able to, if you're connected to it with your passion, if you've got a mission, if you want to serve people, if you're genuine and honest, we're there to help. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. always been my... Your driving my, force. Yeah, it's been my driving force. And it's my, it's my calling in many ways, John. It's what I, I'm passionate about. And I, it, still, it still drives me. Um, mm. The day that stops driving me is a day I stop. Yeah, it's called and time out. Yeah, it's yeah. time out and it's time to change. Um, so that's always been a mission, and I suppose that's underpinned a lot of the the success. But the other the other thing that, and you know, I was talking about this. I'm doing um, a talk on this um, in a in a week's time, and I'm talking about the magic of community and the magic of belief. And when you have a community mm. which believes in each other, yes and you're in a space where people connect are on the same vibe and they're all growing together because mm. confidence doesn't come just by magic. Yeah. It comes from being around the right people. If you're around really confident people and you're not confident, you cannot be confident because you're already behind everyone. Sure. If you're around a lot of negative people and you're trying to be positive, you can't be positive because mm. you're around a lot of negative people. Yeah. But where confidence comes from is, is motion and movement. And if you're around people who are 
who are really on a similar growth journey. Sure. They're Go all going the same yeah. direction. And it's being facilitated in a way where not just the expertise, not just the technology and the ideas and the methods, but it's the spirit and the intent and the inspiration that's driving it. Because mm. everything starts with a thought. Yes. And if you've got that leading it, and then you've got people around you, the group think that is created. I'm going a little bit complex here, John, but you know, for the sake, of the, stuff, sake yeah. of the podcast, I want to give you some extra value. But when you've got that group think, and it's aligned, and people are wanting to work together, and they're wanting to see each other succeed, and it's facilitated in the right way, that's when the magic happens. Yeah, and that's so. exactly what we've used in our community, in our academy, um, and that's one of the secrets that underpins our success. So, and it's, yeah. you know, it's something it's that- it's been that for almost 11 years. Yeah, absolutely, and it's been a consistent theme. Yeah. Um, and and the, what's interesting, and they always say quality shines, and it's the consistency, the way clients who've worked with us for years remain with us for yeah, years yeah. on their journey as they start to grow their businesses scale, but they still come back. They want to be part of the community, still want to continue their learning. They still want to progress. And now our clients have grown, we've grown, sure. and it's been, a, it's been a synergistic relationship. So that's always been good. Why, so why do you think that is then? Why do you think that they've, like, they've, they've stayed with you and they've come back for more? What, what, what's, the, what's the magic there then? So the learning never stops, John. Yes. You know, it, it's, not a, it, it's not a one trick pony. Public Speaking Academy is a lot more than public speaking. Sure. In all honesty, we, we underpin business growth. We look at the psychology of it. We look at the personal and business development together, the synergies between it, systemization, how, how people can align their business strategy with their personal strategy. And then we help people create communities Got you. and tribes. Yeah, we yeah. facilitate that. And you know, no one else is really doing that in the way that we do. And obviously when people are part of that community and they feel that connection, they want to carry want that to journey it. on. Yeah, definitely so. um, and, and I suppose it's intent. You know, we, we, the, the intent that you put out, um, for me it's always been about being able to facilitate results. And, and you know, you're not always gonna be for everyone. Sure. And sometimes people- And you will, have to come to terms yeah, with that. Yeah, and yeah. that's absolutely fine. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's not something that I, I, I ever worry about. I'm always, I'm always more concerned and my focus is always aligned with the people who are around me yeah. um, and who have invested their time, money, energy, commitment to be around us and you know that's where my energy is oh, going that's where my focus is amazing and, yeah it's the mission I, what what i what i really want to do now then in bilal is i, I want to go back 11 years mm. to mm -hmm. or there thereabouts mm. to at the start of of, of public speaking academy mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. what happened what was the transition why did you start it and you know yeah, was it to question. satisfy yourself uh, did, did you suffer with public speaking is this how it all started so so for me the mission and it's not something I've revealed before, and I'll, I'll reveal it today. Um, but for me, the personal mission came out of a very, very difficult circumstance. So I'd gone through divorce. Mm -hmm. I was in a job that I hated. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been through a place where I'd suffered from um, anxiety and pain around just generally around the leadership traits, things that you need to master when you're a leader. Mm. So when all eyes are on you, not just on the public speaking space, but as a leader generally, the pressure's on you, the dynamics there. And I'd been in, in, in some really serious scrapes, if you like, as sure, a leader sure. um, in organizations where politics had been played out. And um, for, what, for various reasons, they, 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 there were games that were played and that impacted me massively. Mm. Um, and it was out of those spaces that I had to learn again. So I had to learn on a personal level, I had to learn on a business level, I had to learn on, on a destination level. What did I want to achieve? And I knew that I, very early on, that the one thing that changes everything is the way you communicate. If you yeah. can communicate your vision with yeah. clarity, with conviction, with certainty, mm -hmm. that's when people follow. Yeah. And I understood that. And I'd worked towards it, you know, it'd taken me a long time to start working, honing those skills. So I was beginning to hone those skills. And at that point, I was connected with certain people um, who were facilitators on that journey for me, later became business partners. Mm -hmm. 
But frankly, it was it was the it was the end of the marriage for me that meant I decided it was time to do something for me. Yeah. It was time for me to follow my calling. Um, and and I also knew that there were many people in a similar space who could do with the support and the help um, from people like myself. So yeah. that was that was really the the, the, the yeah it was it it was the foundations and and before I'd got into that space, I was doing a lot of executive coaching sure. within the organisation. So I knew I had the coaching skills, I knew I had the speaking skills. And I knew I had the business skills, so I'd, I'd got all these three different you got the toolkit toolkit yeah. toolkits there. I just needed that spark, and it was it was the pain of the divorce. It was sure. the difficulties and the challenges that took place there in my personal life that made me stop and think. Actually, I want to do something that connects me with my mission. Yeah, totally. And that's where. That's what PSA was born. Yeah. Because like prior to that, I mean, like like you were saying, that you've been in some really kind of high level positions. You you were the home office for the learning side of there. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, you were a chairman for a company. Yep. You were in, involved. You were project director for a yes. few years. And each of these roles were a couple of a couple of years at a time. I've got letters behind my name, John. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Bill, you're, Bill, you're Bill MBA, uh, yeah. MBBS, what, what is it? Prince Two and all the rest of it. Yeah. Really? I've done all these different sophisticated things. But if 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 I'm if I'm really honest with you it's it's nice to be able to say I've got these letters I've got my executive mm -hmm. coaching certificates I've got this I've part of the IC but but in reality all of that was great and I don't I, I don't knock it but the real world learning for me and being able to the people yes. skills are everything of course of course um, do, you, do you think that I, I was always just saying then you kind of jumped around a little bit for them over five years mm. three different positions do you think you were looking for this calling it's a really good, yeah, really good point. And I think I used to have, there used to be a bit of a joke amongst my social circles, like, what job are you doing today, Bill? Oh. <laughs> you know, I must have done about 50 different jobs. I mean, I've been a, uh, from, from 14 onwards, I've worked, um, I've been, I've worked in London Zoo, mm -hmm. I've been a security guard, I've been a doorman, yeah. I've been a, um, I've been a window uh, tele sales, been a marketing. Uh, you know, I, I've done. I've been a waiter. I've been all of those things, yeah, yeah. Uh, and much, much more. You know, uh, it, and every single experience shapes you. Every single totally. experience that you undertake in, in the world of work helps shape your understanding really, of the world. Yeah. So, what made um, you stick at PSA then? So you started this up. Yep. For yourself. Yes. You know, I don't know what your situation were like financially, whether you were stable or not. But like, you, you've come into this eleven years ago, yeah. and unlike the last few years when you were prior to that, jumping around a few different places trying to find a way, yeah. you've stuck with this for eleven years. You've impacted so many people, yeah. changed people's lives. Yes. Do you know what? What was the thing that made you stick at this? I think. I think you never stop. You never stop growing in business. The beauty of business is it's dynamic. So. The second you hit one level, you're looking further. It's like a mountain. Sure. So you think you got to the peak, and then you get to that place, and you realise there's another peak, and there's another peak. So that peak keeps going. This is a mountain that never yeah, ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I think that that for me, John, is a is a uh, is a challenge. I am passionate about the people I serve. I've got a mission where I want to work and affect the lives of millions, if not billions. I want to be able to equip the right people with the right tools mm. to give them a chance to have their voice sure. heard. Um, and I genuinely believe, I genuinely believe with all my heart that if the right people could speak, the world would be a better place. Yeah, yeah. I genuinely believe that. Um, and speaking shouldn't be a, a space for the privileged. It shouldn't be a place for eaten, uh, goers mm. or Oxbridge goers speaking needs to be a space for everyday man and woman right. and it needs to be a vehicle and a tool that every single person can level up mm. and speak up yes um, in order to stand out and that makes a better world and I mm. genuinely believe that you know people talk about democracy they talk about equity and equality and diversity but you know what without the skills there is no diversity yeah. Yeah. without 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 that equity is is just a aspiration 
And I think what I learned in the home office was lip service. People yeah. would pay the get, play the game, there was political correctness and all this stuff. But when it came to backing it up and giving people tools, when I was the one who facilitated that, I started to cause a disruption to the status quo. And when I caused a disruption to the status quo, there was games played with yeah. my career. Yeah, yeah, because major. now Bill I was coming on the scene and he was cha changing things up. That's troublemakers. <laughs> That's disruptor. Of course. That's uh, disturbing the status quo. And you know what? They call it an entrepreneur now, though. Entrepreneur. Not that. <laughs> there you go. And I knew then, um, at that point, that my calling was to be a disruptor, to disturb the status quo, to coach the right people, to support them and be an intervention, be that catalyst. And that's exactly who I am. So I love what I do yeah, for that reason. Amazing, John, you know, amazing. I wake up every day and do I love that. You, do you find that, like, w the kind of companies that you're working with now, like you were saying earlier on, you work with celebrities and stars mm. and, and big organizations. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that for you to win their business, you, just, you, you still have to deliver a certain level of lip service? I think to win their business, sometimes it's, it's rather than lip service, it's more around understanding what their problem is and mm. allowing them to be human. Mm. Um, what I found in, in my world is, is it doesn't matter where people are. They could be the most powerful person of an organization or they could be um, in the public eye. But behind closed doors, within these four walls, they want to be able to be themselves. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that's who I am. I'm, I'm there to make it okay to say, sure. you know what? My heart be beat is raised when I'm walking in front of those cameras or my mind goes blank, Bilal. And I know I look good over here on the pitch, but you know what? When I'm having to speak in front of the camera, I can't do it. Or whatever it is, so it's absolutely right to be you and it's, it's, it's okay and I think your job as a leading coach is to make people feel comfortable, doesn't matter which level they are, mm. when they come into my space, they're my delegates yes. and I don't bow down to that because yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what, what title they've got, when they're in our space, there's a level of there, of we all play the game. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. totally. And that's, I mean, that's incredible advice there, right there, is mm -hmm. that they're on that level. That's right. You know, it doesn't make a difference who you are, what, whether yeah. you've got money or not, or whatever it is. I mean, just to give you a level. story, there was, um, there was a particular client, and she was a very senior person in an organization. And when she started to play the games that senior folk do sometimes, and her PA was calling me and saying, oh, well, you know, this is how it's expected and blah, blah, blah. And at that point, I stopped it halfway and I said, okay, I think this is not the way I operate. Yes. And what I'd say to any, anyone who's serious is as soon as, you should always be client-centered, but you don't suck up to clients. Mm, yeah, you're not there, yeah, you're not yeah. there to, we're not, we're not in the industry um, of, um, hotel services and all the rest yeah, of it, you know, yeah, we're, not, we're not in that the customer's not always hosp right. <laughs> hospitality yeah, industry. I mean, we're there to be polite and there to be, be human. But you're um, there to challenge. But you're there to challenge, yeah. absolutely. So don't be afraid of it. So, um, so yeah, and, and, and in fact, that's what she needed. And she came back to say, actually, Bilal, you know what, you're right. I shouldn't be um, calling these shots like that. You are the coach and, and yep, yeah, tell me what I need tell to do. Tell me what I need to do. <laughs> yeah, and that's it, that, that helped her sure. um, in the end. So, you know, you sometimes you have to be firm and uh, friendly but it's the way the the business goes and uh, i'd encourage everyone to to adopt that right attitude yeah. so what like you've so you travel around quite a bit as well mm -hmm. i mean like you, you're even sheffield london's home originally it's not actually john i'm, no. a, I'm originally a sheffield man um and i spent 15 years in london right so right. i i did uh i did a significant stint in london um I suppose my informative adult years were spe spent in London. Right. I was, I was somebody who, and that's where I did a lot of my learning, but also a lot of my suffering, if you like, because mm. you know I'm a self-made man, and I had to build my, my build myself up from from zero. Sure. Um, there was no silver spoon in my in my world, and you had to you had to fend for yourself. And London's not an easy place. It's mm. not paved with gold, no, no. Um, and it's bloody expensive. Yeah. So uh, I had to learn the hard way. But I think those early years informed me, and um, helped me um, grow okay. as a person. Sure. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it's a wonderful place in terms of 
Connecting development, and development and, connecting, yeah, and personal sure. growth and opportunity, sure. you know, it's a really, really forward thinking. What's place. the biggest difference for between what you see between London and, and, and like Sheffield? I think uh, if I'm going to be really blunt, and I will be blunt because that's who I am. I'm blunt, Bilal. But if if the, if you look at the two cities, London's a place where you have to hustle. Uh -huh. Whether you're an Uber driver or a coach, whether you're a shop owner or an office worker, you have to be there traveling to work. You have to be there on time. There's, there's a lot of demands in terms of financial commitments and the, 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 the pace is fast. And I think people are hungry in London. Mm. People are hungry. I think when we look to Sheffield and the, the district, pe we, we're, we're, we're in a town where housing's a lot more affordable here, sure. right? So the, the idea of having your own home in London, your salary might be 30, 40 grand, I'm talking about averages over yeah, here, yeah, yeah. but your first property is probably around about 350 mark. Mm. And you compare that with the prices here and people don't have that same hunger. Sure, sure. So I think, I think we're kind of privileged in, in the North in many ways. Um, and I do think the opportunity for our mindset as a community, as a people in this part of the world can shift slightly, there's a huge opportunity. But people have to be willing to invest. Uh -huh. They have to be willing to expand their horizon. They have to be willing to work together, to collaborate. Sure. They have to be willing to take risks. Oh, oh. And I think that's that's the gap that we've got in the why North. Why do you think that is then? Why, why do you think that people are conditioned differently up this way? I, thi I think that it's probably, it, it's probably historic, uh, John, and you know, we traditionally steel city, um, We've got a certain culture which works in many ways, but also needs to evolve now. I think we need to think of ourselves slightly differently. I think we need to look at ourselves as, as entrepreneurs, as a community of entrepreneurs, especially in the city of Sheffield, yeah. and stop, stop worrying about um, small amounts of money. You know, it's, it's really important that we allow money to flow yes um and basically we stopped being tight yorkshire <laughs> <laughs> what does it say you know, like we're like we've got deep pockets but short arms <laughs> yeah that's right that's, no, that, and 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 what i will say is people within yorkshire are salt, salt of the earth as well yeah you know there's some fantastic amazing characters genuine people big hearts um loving kind and there's everything to play for which is why i say this region has everything to be proud of. Sure. Genuinely has everything to be proud of and has huge potential. Yeah. And needs to stop being cynical though. Because mm. yes. when, you, when you get rid of cynicism, when you start to actually believe in yourself and believe in others, when you get into that place of belief, that's where growth occurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think if the region starts to, as a collective, starts to think differently, and we lobby the, the, um, the services, the councils, the regions, the gov governance around the region, and we start to bring business here. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's only good for the cities. It's, it, it's got to happen. And I think, you know, Sheffield, for example, um, fourth, fifth largest city, we, we need to be with that identity yeah, yeah. and become a home for business. Um, so I think there's there's a lot of opportunity to move forward, and we need to we need to press on as a as a community in that space. Absolutely. Do you do you doubt yourself at all now? We, we decisions or things that you do? I think self doubt's part of life. Um, you know, you you have moments every day when you when you got self doubt. Yeah. Um, embrace it, and uh, do don't get stuck a, in it. Do you find there's a pattern? Do you tend to find that you, there's the same thing that you doubt a little bit? And if there is, how do you overcome it? I think if it's, if it's familiar territory, I would say the more familiar the self-doubt is, the more you realize it's a pattern. Mm -hmm. And if it's a pattern, at that point, you need to become good at being able to mitigate it yep. and bring something that addresses that. Sure. So, so for myself, for example, if I'm in a place where I, where I might make an assumption about a certain uh, type of meeting, if I'm going to a group uh, a, a large company and there's lots of s board level execs there and I might make an assumption that I need to play a certain game. Got you. If I'm self aware of that, if I know what thoughts are going through my head before they even go through, I'm able to put some interventions in there and that's mm. really important. So it's a big self awareness piece. Yeah, yeah. 
and that's 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 yeah. the word there, isn't it? Self awareness. Like, yeah, how, you've got to catch the thought yeah. early on. Yeah, if and what does it really mean as well? Yeah. like because a lot of the time you, like, I was talking about this with a different podcast, is that. Yeah. Like you, you might get really angry and frustrated, yeah, but, yeah. but actually, if you stop, and as you just said, then and, and stop and mitigate it, yeah. the actually the, the the anger might not really be anger. It might be that you feel like you're losing something. That's right. That's right. That's right. And 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 the the other thing is, it's um, I mean, a good example of this is road rage. <laughs> okay, and you see a do lot. You, of do you people, get road rage? You know, uh, I uh, I tend not to anymore, John. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you master that? <laughs> and, 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 and then, well, it's the points on my license. Uh, uh, that's what I'm going to watch out for. So I've got to, I've got to behave. But the thing is, it's 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 important to understand. People do think in an unconscious way when they're driving. Yeah. So it's a really good example to give because uh, if you imagine, if you ask yourself the question, anyone listening to this, for example, ask themselves, what do I behave like on the road? Mm when somebody cuts me up or somebody beeps at me or somebody looks at me wrong, yeah. how do I behave? Because that's going to give you good insight into your own personality. Yeah, sure. And and sometimes the, the, the my own behavior, I look at myself and I think to myself, why why am I feeling agitated about that? It's only, sure. You know, it, somebody's got in front of you and cut you up. Does it really, really matter? Yeah. And asking the right questions yeah. sometimes. Asking the right questions of yourself is a really good intervention because then, you know, you're two seconds late. So what? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're I, late, you're late. I, I find that, generally speaking, when things annoy you mm. for, from actions from others, it's a part of you that's underdeveloped. Mm. Now, it's not saying that you've got to become an arse, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but it's an area that, that maybe when people do rub us up the wrong way, it's because they're showing a side of them that actually we wish we had a little bit more of that. Yes. Do you find yes, that, yes. that permeates across into like speaking? Well, I, th- I think when, when you're... When you're affected by anything, it's it's telling you it's a signal, mm. and it's an opportunity equally. So if something's agitating you, you need to ask yourself why, why? and and what is it that you'd want. So you need to have an aspiration. You need to have a goal, if you like, um, and it's from that goal that you can then start to put the interventions and start to work towards. But if you didn't have that goal in the first place, if you didn't have that agitation in the first place. Then you don't have that stimuli, you don't have that signpost. Yeah, sure. So you actually embrace it. It's, it's embracing. a bit. It? It's embracing those things. Oh, yeah. So, so it's looking into things, and anything that happens is always a signal. Yes. It's always a signal. So it's always. Just, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah. always growing. So we're living beings. We're human. It's okay to fail. It's okay to trip up. Yeah. It's okay to have self doubt. Um, you know, I'm not afraid of self doubt. Does that yeah. make sense? And yeah, that, yeah, I yeah, think sure. that's, that's a difference, um, and that's a good place to be. So self doubt always exists. Of course. Do you have a, uh, a framework or a certain um, routine that you do when you start to feel yourself maybe getting a little bit of self-doubt? Is there a certain thing that you do? Do you use NLP like an anchor or anything like that to, to snap your back? I've got various frameworks, uh, John, and I suppose some of the stuff that I do is yet using NLP techniques and anchors, but beyond that and something that is probably even more powerful for me on a personal level and for many of the people that I've coached over the years is is to move into a place of belief mm. and service so when you start to believe in the people you serve and when you start to think about their requirements and you tie that in with your purpose often it makes your mission greater than your fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when your mission or your purpose is greater than fear, mm-hmm. you let go of fear because yeah. now it's overshadowed by something Perfect. far greater. So it's yeah, it's, it's it's a method that I've 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 um, owned and talked about for a long time and right. you know, I, I I live by it myself as brilliant, well. Brilliant. Yeah. Do you do you have certain rituals that you have to do each day to as well I, I mean you was recently at the Tony Robbins UPW, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and one He's of the very m- into priming and yeah, priming yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, is this yeah. something that's where we're leading? Actually, is mm. this something that you do to keep yourself in a so for as me, Tony says peak state. For for me, uh, physicality is really important. So so the gym, mm-hmm. running routines. If I don't get to the peak district and do my walking, my hiking, I feel like I've missed something. So yeah. those routines are really important. Um, family is very important. That's an anchor for me. Yeah. Um, the love that you get from your family members is really important for me, um, and that helps maintain. And then, 
working with the right people. I think you know your clients are also your your business family, and um, you, people often think that they separate they, they separate the two. But in fact, it, it's a pleasure to be able to work with the people I work sure. with, um, and I genuinely do care for them. And I hope they care for me. I think, <laughs> I think, I think they do. There's one yeah, or two yeah, here that, yeah, are, yeah, yeah, I think they do now and again. So yeah, no, it's, it's, it's that's really important because yeah. you know you're very limited in life. Life is very short, and we know that. Mm -hmm. Yet we live like we're going to live forever. Yeah. And and sometimes and we think we're bulletproof when we. And we think well. we're uh, yeah, and it's okay to be vulnerable, and it's so especially for the for the blokes out there, especially for the Yorkshiremen, yeah. who think that they have to be tough, the and they have to be strong, yeah. and they have to be constantly. And, I, and I'm guilty of it myself. And, and, and then sometimes there's people around you who will say, actually, it's okay to have your bad days. Mm. It's okay to you know, be vulnerable. It's okay to want to give up um, and, and you know, forgive yourself for it. And that's, that's you know, you're going to have good days and bad days. In business, you're going to succeed and you're going to fail. Yeah, yeah. You're going to you know, have a high days, low days. So just embrace it. Of course, yeah. of course. Talk, talk to me about money. What's your, what's your like, the reason I ask this is that here in the UK, mm. we have a real hang up talking about money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and as a result, people tend to struggle to get it to flow to them. Yep, yep, so yep. like, what's your mindset? What's your beliefs about money? Should you talk about it? Do we talk about it enough? I, Do we need to talk I, about I, it enough? I think people Im should embrace and have a love for money as a tool. Mm. Um, money gives you opportunity, gives you choice. Yep. People often have hang-ups, you're right, and they often think it's uh, more money, more problems, money's mm -hmm. the root of all evil. Um, there's all these belief systems that are created to maintain poverty. Sure. Um, but in fact, there's more than enough abundance out there for everyone. Um, and you've got to have that belief set, because if you don't have that belief set, what you're going to do is you're going to turn it away from you, you're going to turn the opportunities away, and you're going to be afraid of charging what you're worth. And if you're going to be one of those people, the problem is you won't buy, and yep. I promise you, you won't sell. Yeah, yeah. If you can't buy, you can't sell, yep. um, and that's a law that is universal. So, people who struggle to spend struggle to sell. Absolutely, absolutely, one hundred percent. Which is where it kind of leads right into the next part. That mm. is that that a lot of people know the need to better themselves, they know that they might have issues, maybe it's confidence, maybe it's the speaking abilities, maybe it's the fact that they've got bad habits, but mm -hmm. they often use the excuse that money mm -hmm. is not available. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the first question there is why do you think they, they make excuses like that? It's an interesting one, isn't it, John? Because you'll, you'll hear that as a, as a leader yourself and you'll hear that amongst people. And I think I think people have often told themselves stories in order to keep themselves where they are. Mm -hmm. um, they've told themselves and they've created belief which maintains the status quo, because sure. in reality, nobody wants to move. Mm. And the problem with that is, if you're reinforcing that belief at every opportunity, when you get something, when you get a window, and we've all had moments in our life where you've seen a great opportunity, and then you've said, but I just can't afford it. Yeah. At that point, those words, I just can't afford it, all you're really saying is, I just think I should stay the same. Yes. That's what you're really yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about, I can't afford it, because fundamentally, if you're, God forbid, if your mother, father, brother, sister, wife, partner was held at ransom, at gunpoint, and the ransom money of a billion pound for their life, was put on the line. I can pretty much guarantee anyone find a way. would find a way. Yeah. And you always will find a way. You will always find a way. And the thing is, the problem that people have is they allow the limitations to control them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's what's happening there. So the second question then that ties into that is how do you change that belief? How do you change that mindset? Well, I think I think it start it starts with us. It starts with you as a leader. You know, you need to demonstrate that. And you need to believe it yourself. Um, I, I, I don't stop investing in myself, I never have. I'm a big believer in, in being able to demonstrate and lead the way, so I'm always learning. I always spend a part of my budget on my learning, mm -hmm. uh, my business budget on my own learning, and I'm always continuously refreshing. Part of the Public Speaking Academy journey has been that we've continually added new tiers 
to our offering. So we've never just stayed about public speaking, we've added business development, we've added personal growth and personal development mindset change, all these different facets, but that's been born out the leaders doing exactly that, investing in sure. themselves and sure. in the business. So you're always continuing on a journey. Um, so number one, it starts with us. Number two, it's being able to communicate the value. If you don't communicate value brilliantly in a way that shifts belief, in your clients, in your prospects, if you can't shift their belief system, then you're stuck. Yeah. Because they're coming in in a space where their belief system is at point A and you need to get their belief system to point B. Therefore, your ability to communicate value, your ability to communicate stories that engage and move people, that's really key. And you've got to do that with absolute integrity and absolute truth. So. There's a, there's a, there's a, it's a complex answer, it's not what, it's multifaceted, mm -hmm. but it's for the leaders to demonstrate yeah. and then facilitate. Sure, so, so this ties back, I mean, like from, from a sales point of view, I do a lot mm -hmm. of myself with the sales mm -hmm. training, but, but it's almost vital that you sell it to yourself first. Mm -hmm. Is what you say. That's one of the things. Absolutely, self-influence yeah. is, is massive. If you don't uh, believe in yeah. it, if you're not if you're not the first yeah. sale, if you wouldn't be prepared to buy it yourself, yeah. 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 you struggle to get anyone to. That's to right. Buy it from that's well. that's right. That's right. So 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 everything begins with us. If we don't if we don't have a belief in our, in ourselves, what we're going to do is we're going to hold our own uh, selves open to their belief, yeah. and we're going to end up admit saying, actually, you're right. You can't afford it. Sure. Actually. I can't help help you and blah and, and vice versa. Of so course. so really, it's you know it's it's down to belief systems. Of course, yeah. How how do you then? So like one of the things I'm I'm really big on with people is that there is a lot of competition in lots of different spaces in, yep. in all things that we yep. do. Yep. And if we do the same as everybody else, the yep. only metric someone can measure you on is price. Yes. So what is it that you do with your businesses to to build that? Not I wouldn't say unique selling point, but to make you different. I think I think it's about you being you, and it's about so it's always about us bringing our own personality and our own brand to any space. So the more we discover about ourselves, the more we're able to bring that out there, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, so when, you're, when you're bringing any new product, new service out, if you're able to bring it under your personal brand and your personal brand is powerful, people buy into you as a sure, person. Sure. Um, and that's where the integrity, that's where the values, that's where the trust, that's where the consistency, that's when the hard work kicks in. And that's, you know, that's something that I stand for yeah, and, I, totally. and I believe and I teach, um, but I live by myself. Fantastic. So just a couple more questions as we bring it into a landing this yes, one. Yes, so, yes, yes. Um, random question, what's more important do you think, the people that you know or who knows you? It's a really good question, John. Oh, I'm, I'm going I'm to give a political answer and say, I think both, John. Yeah. I think both. I mean, it's, it's, it's important to be able to be, um, to be loved and liked. It's, a, it's an important human uh, requirement, but it's not something that you should live by. Mm -hmm. I, I often say to my delegates and the people who follow me, I said, look, you know, I'm not here to win your approval, but I'm here to get you the result. Yes. Yes. And if I have to kick your ass, I will kick your ass sure. till you get the result. You know, that's, yeah, that's what it's yeah, all no, about. That's, yeah. that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. And then the next question, so 11 years ago, mm -hmm. if you can go back and see 11 year, uh, Bilal 11 years ago, what advice would you give yourself about this journey that you've had? I'd say technology and online is important. Mm -hmm. um, that is the future. And people, people need to get brilliant at that. But real life experience, nothing reply, uh, replaces real life experience. The yeah. skills that you've got. So I've got no regrets in terms of being a real life experience person, but I think technology would give me an edge. Uh -huh. um, and it's certainly something that we're investing in. Sure. Um, and that's where we're moving. So Brilliant. It's, Brilliant. Uh, yeah. it's been a journey, Good. but we've, uh, we've enjoyed it. And now it's time to, to spread it to the masses. So, so the advice would be to, to, to tell yourself at an early age to invest deeper into, into tech? Definitely get the tech yeah. ready. Yeah. Have, have good friends in tech. Yeah. Invest there, make it a priority. Um, but not at the expense of getting real world experience because you could be the best in tech but then you're going to be copying everyone else yeah, and doing yeah. the same stuff as everyone else totally. whereas if you've had real world experience you've picked up all the knowledge 
um, face to face, which nothing in the world can replace. Can be, yeah, yeah, yeah to, nothing can be that. Fantastic, Bilal, that's okay. been absolutely Pleasure. amazing. Yeah. Pleasure, John. Uh, to wrap things up, do you know, tell people a little bit about where they can find out more about the things okay, that you're working Okay, so on. it's Public Speaking Academy. I'll, I'll uh, leave you a link with publicspeakingacademy.co.uk um, to email us by all means. Um, it's Bilal Jamil. I'm available on Facebook. Uh, come and follow me, follow some of the work that I do. Um, and no doubt there will be some event that you can get yourself down to but it'd be nice to see people Good. face are, to face. Are you doing, you're doing it a big event are you still? Uh, we'll be launching a mastermind event in summer 2019 right. Right. so uh, there'll be some some a lot of noise around yeah. that and we'll be bringing some fantastic guest speakers from around the world to the region That's amazing so um, so yeah some some big stuff happening incredible um, but there's always a uh, opportunity where there's a will, there's a way. There's a way, and, brilliant. And Bilal, thank yep. you so much. Thank you very time. much. It's been amazing. Absolutely amazing, John. Thank you very much. Good luck.